when you were first starting out, what led you to inclusion and belonging, not only as a professional, but as an artist? Well, growing up, you know, in, in Boston, Massachusetts, and growing up with this name, I didn't feel welcome. And people would bully us, they would call us names, throw rocks at us, beat us up, whether it was classmates, people in our community, even some of my teachers. And so just growing up, I never really felt like I belonged. And so my life was a a uh, situation of, of exclusion, you know, and I speak to a lot of younger groups in some of their schools, you know, we talk about things like suicide and, you know, feeling like you didn't want to check out, like you wanted to check out and didn't belong, like I've been there. I've been in those spaces. And once I started to learn that my experience is as American as anybody else's, my experience is as human as anybody else's, that started particularly around like the high school time where I started to realize that I could speak to people in a way that could celebrate our differences, but also let people know that we have more things that are in common than we do that are separate. And once I started doing that again, I was speaking to kids, community centers, prisons, but then as I got older and more mature in terms of the speaking, that led to churches, associations, corporations, even speaking at the United Nations, you know, in terms of doing this work, because fundamentally, that's where we all are. But that's how I got into this work was because of the exclusion I experienced as a young person.